everyone, this is Brittany Bond. Welcome back to the podcast. Today I am, I only can speak about what, uh, whatever is showing up for me. This is how I am. So today we are going to talk about how to wake up and raise your frequency in a way that feels good in your body. So this is something that I have been going through for a while. Um, I would I would say that I have been awake. I, th- I think there's levels to that, you know, like about being awake. And the point is, is that if we were fully awake, uh, we would be in the spirit world, right? So we only want to be awake enough where it feels good in our bodies. Like the point of being awake is not to know that we are everything, everywhere, all that is, and to understand all of our connections to all of our other timelines that are happening simultaneously, and <laughs> to understand the point of existence and the point of us being here and growing our consciousness and, da, 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 and everything that's going to happen before and after because time is an illusion. The point is to be now, here in the present, and to understand what we need to know now in order to do the things we need to do now to further our timeline to grow as souls and to have fun and to have it feel good in our bodies so how do we do that (laughs) i have a lot to say about this um first i invite all of us to take a deep breath um so if you've the first time you're doing this with me i invite you if you're somewhere where you can close your eyes and you feel comfortable doing so to close your eyes and then um, I invite you to put your hand on your your lower stomach like below your belly button and when you breathe in expand like push against your hand so expand as much as you can your stomach so breathe in and expand so and then when you breathe in bring the air all the way up your chest and through your head so first we're going to exhale and then breathe into our stomach and up through our chest and through our head and at the top hold hold it a little bit and hold and then, and then let it all out and you can even like wiggle your torso a little bit and ground yourself into your body and we'll do it one more time so breathe in and hold at the top and notice how you feel in your body right now if there's any sensations happening in your body if you're in a place where there's sounds notice the sounds let them in if you're in nature i invite you to be in nature as much as possible to open your eyes and look at nature and let in the nature i'm looking at my plant in my room right now (laughs) because i'm inside and just absorb as much as you can, allow as much as you can, and know that you are loved by me and the universe, and that you're doing great, and that everything's okay, and everything is on path, and if you are led to this podcast, you're doing fucking amazing, (laughs) and everything's going to be even more okay after you listen to this podcast, because I'm going to give you a lot of tips on how to handle all of these frequency upgrades. Okay, so (coughs) if you have listened to many of my podcasts before, you'll know that I was raised in a religious, a Christian religious cult called Jehovah's Witnesses. So after I left my cult, I kind of put spirituality and religion in a box and like in my mind, (laughs) in my mind (laughs) and locked it away. And then I went very into the mental world and I like I studied law. I worked in a law firm. I lived in big cities, you know, I was very like structured, like every single moment of my day was scheduled. And I think for for me, for feeling so out of control in my growing up and not literally not having that much control of my life, it was a way for me to ground in myself and to kind of build trust back with myself. And also I just felt really unsafe, you know, so I kind of just did that because that's what I needed to do to feel safe. When I got to Copenhagen here, fast forward eight years, got to Copenhagen, and I started realizing that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, and religion is just a construct that someone made to try and control us. <laughs> um, and when we can let that go, we can realize that 
yeah, we're here to grow, um, to, to evolve our consciousness. So if you want to put that, whatever label you want to put on that, that's what it is. That's what's happening. Um, and so if you're into any of this and you must be, cause you're listening to this podcast, um, you will probably feel that there is a lot of things shifting energetically in the world right now and also in your bodies, in your vortex. So there's a, like a micro, like a personal level happening here. And then there's a macro level, which is like the whole world, the whole universe, everything that is that's happening. And it's really beautiful. Like all of it's kind of like synchronistically lining up for some big big things happening very soon and we all can all feel it um even this is on the subconscious level i think most of us can feel this so what happens when you feel it consciously (laughs) um so let me give you some real talk i've always felt very grounded in my body i've always felt very connected to my body this is just who i am and you could say that it's through my trauma, you know, some people have chosen to disassociate from their body. I chose to use it as an opportunity to like ground more into myself and to grow through it and go through it in a way where I connected to myself more. So because of this, the, the, when I started looking into spirituality and like understanding that we are more than these physical bodies and that we actually are like these huge souls and spirits that are just like a portion of us are, Um, activated in these bodies and then I realized okay how can I get more of it became a game with me where I was like how can I get more of my consciousness going through my body in a way that feels good in my body and so I tried psychedelics for a while and if you have never tried psychedelics I just want to tell you that I I do not as of right now I'm not using psychedelics I view it as what we call a permission slip so once you once you're pretty awake, you realize that everything is just a construct, and that we make up these things in the three D reality to help us get on the vibrations that we want to in order to explore different realms. So psychedelics, it's it, you can even take. They've done this in studies where you can take a placebo psychedelic and have a very similar effect to taking the drug. Um, I'm talking about like mushrooms and acid and maybe even DMT. Um, not all the way. I'm not going to say that that's a thing, like a whole thing. I'm just saying that it is a permission slip to help you get on a higher vibration than you currently are. And so when I think about like the first times that I took like a full, well, say like a full dose of acid, like a normal person, normal body weight, average body weight is about 100 to 150 cc's of acid. Um, the point of it is to get you to show you a day in the life of what you could be without all of your trauma and your programming. And so if you see me in the video, I'm, if you're watching this on video, like I'm putting my, my hand in my line, like here, and then like higher up here, you have a day in the life of Brittany Bond. If she was, you know, without trauma and all her programming that she was raised with. Those were really beautiful days when I used those as permission slips because I was like, wow, everything is so amazing. Like I was playing like a little kid. I was getting all these downloads of like all the beautiful things I wanted to create in the world. And I was just like allowing all the love in and dancing and realizing how much I even more how much I love music. I love music and listening to it on acid was just like, ah, I felt like I was having like orgasms in my ears and And then the point of it is that when you get off of it, so acid takes like 12 hours, you get off of it and then you're able to integrate that experience because you're getting, while you're on it, you're on a higher vibration. And so you're noticing, okay, I actually, I don't want to work on this thing anymore, or I don't want to date this person anymore, or like, you know, like whatever, it's supposed to give you some things and some things that you can change in your life. Maybe not so dramatic as like breaking up with someone, but you know, just like things that you can help you to feel better in your body and raise your vibration when you're quote unquote sober after that. And this is what I did. I really used it as homework. I was like journaling. I was applying everything I learned and I kept raising my vibration more and more and more. Um, fast forward to this summer when 
So the so I probably have to the first time I ever smoked weed I uh, was like four years ago. Like I didn't dr- I grew up in a religion where like drugs was like all all type of drugs, psychedelics, anything, weed, all of it was like you're going to hell. It's like terrible, you know? So the first time I took psychedelics was maybe a couple years ago. Um, since then, I've done a very thorough search of it <laughs> uh, in very safe ways. I'm very grateful for the people who have shown it to me, the spaces that have been held in a way that my body felt very safe and also for honoring my body and always choosing to listen to my body. Whether someone else offered it or not, I always like checked in and really like honored what was good for me. Now I have gotten to the point where um, there is so much energy going through my body that psychedelics would be too much. It would be bringing me out of my body in a way that didn't feel good. So that permission slip, unfortunately, I mean, I say unfortunately because it's really fun, um, is no longer like working for me right now. I'll just say that because who knows what's happening in the future. But for now, the amount of energy moving through my body, and this is what I'm realizing is I want to just say this to all of you guys is that the point is not to be awake all the way. I think, and I, I, I just want to say I honor that many people are in pain uh, or they're very confused about why they're on these timelines and what they're supposed to be doing with their lives. And I have had moments like that in my life as well. And so, of course, you want to like wake up out of that because you're looping. You're like, I'm in so much pain, but then I do the thing that causes more pain or I date the person in a different way over and over again. Or, you know, I can't seem to find uh, a calling in my life that brings money in in a way that feels good in my body or like, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? So I understand all of that. I just want you to know that I have journeyed some of this, a lot of this path on the human experience (laughs) and it really is about the journey because when you get to the point where you cannot take psychedelics anymore, you have so much energy going through your body that you're just, and you're awake to everything. You can see through everything. It starts to be about like, how can I ground this energy and how do I do this in a way that feels good because it can feel a lot, a lot of it too much, you know? So a lot of you are on this path and that's amazing. And I'll speak more into these things in this podcast. In the beginning, I want to speak about my experience of where I'm at right now, because this is, this is what I need to do. And, and I know a lot of, some of you are going to be getting here very soon. And I think this is, I hope that this helps you so that you do not feel how I felt for the last couple months. So I made a post yesterday on Instagram and it was about like, you know, how I'm just like being real with people that I've been feeling a little bit overwhelmed uh, in the last couple of months since Faraday and I got together because imagine having two people who are fully awake, fully understand everything and very dropped in their bodies hanging out 24 7 it is like a constant acid trip or mdma trip or whatever psychedelic experience you want to relate to it's like we are high all the time and we are getting downloads all the time to the point where like last week i have had to be like i need to go spend a night away like i went away to the east side of the island and stayed in the in the forest or the jungle and like grounded <laughs> just in nature by myself because i was like it's too much in my body and and I love it and I love him and I, and I asked for this, right? I asked for this and I feel like what's happening is we are accelerating our frequency. We're raising our frequency so high <clears throat> that it's starting to feel uncomfortable in my body. Like it feels like if you've ever taken psychedelics, it feels like I'm coming up on some sort of psychedelics, like really hard. They say come up is when you're coming up is like when you first take the psychedelics to when you are on the frequency that the psychedelics will set you at, like the peak of your frequency, the highest. But that that gap is coming up. You're like switching your frequencies from one level to another. <coughs> and that coming up can feel a little bit clunky. It can feel a little bit like, ugh, in my body. Uh, and for everyone, some people get sick to their stomach. Some people just like, you know, they need to breathe. They need to ground. That's how I've been feeling for a month sober. So I will wake up and I'm like, whoa, like my head's spinning. Uh, I'm getting downloads. Sometimes I like uh, in the when I'm dreaming, I'm like 
literally in another dimension and I can feel that it's not just a dream. I'm actually in another dimension and I'm getting downloads and I wake up and I'm like, like, cause that the dream world or whatever that world is felt just as real, if not more real than this world. And this is when you realize like we are just consciousness dreaming and we're choosing to have these, this dream of a 3d <laughs> reality experience. And when you realize all of this, it's very a delicate balance in your mental construct, your personality construct and your ego to not go a little bit crazy because you're almost too awake and your body is like, what is the point? Like, why do we need to be here? Why don't we just be in spirit when we're a lot more powerful? And then, and then <laughs> this is where I come back to the beginning of the podcast where I was like, I am very grounded in my body. I am very good at staying in my body and staying grounded. And even for me, this was a lot. So yesterday when I made this post on Instagram, I had a very close friend of mine. I call her D because I don't know if she wants me to <laughs> call her out on this podcast. Um, she messaged me and she said, a lot of people refer to what you're talking about here as a kundalini awakening. And I was like, Kundalini, Kundalini is like the energy that's like in your root chakra, like the sexual energy that's in your sexual, your root chakra, sexual, you know what I mean. So I, I have done like Kundalini breathing here on Kovan Yang. There's a, it's a, it's a, Kundalini is like a thing here on the line. It's like Kundalini breathing, Kundalini yoga. And it's like supposed to activate this uh, energy in your body. And so when she said this to me, I was like, Kundalini, like what? And so I researched it yesterday and realized that Kundalini is basically your, it's a certain level of awakening where your higher self becomes, is like ready to merge with your mental construct. So your higher self is like, hey, you're awake enough for me to start talking to you consciously and, and just start working with you and like allowing your higher self to kind of take control of your physical body more. And to kind of like play the game at a higher level of life. Like we're all playing this game, pretending like we're humans <laughs> and having this human experience. Um, and when this happens, some people actually kind of go crazy because it's too much. Like their mental brain is like, no, I don't want to do this. I'm worried about losing my personality construct. And then their higher self is like, no, it's fine. Like, let's go. Let's play. I want to give you more downloads I want to you know and then they start kind of fighting <laughs> and then and then you feel like going a little crazy um so I did a ton of research on this and I was like wow I wish I had known this like months ago because yes I have been awake for most of my life but this last summer when Faraday and I met each other and then especially like when him and I started dating and living together and like are together for most of the day um it is a lot of energy and I'm just like, wow, wow, wow. I wish that, I wish that someone had told me this because look, we, we know that the world that we are currently born into is shit and it's not going very well. And everyone is getting this download in the spiritual world about something called like a new earth. And and in my opinion, like everyone can have their own opinion about this, but in my opinion, it is literally like we, at every single moment are shifting our earth all the way. Okay. I'm trying to explain this in words. If you don't know that much about, I'm trying to make this like understandable because I've done lots of research on this. So the people who are, waking up to the fact that we can move the energy through our bodies in a way where we are fully in control of our timelines. It's actually, you're, you're giving control over to your higher self. And so your higher self is like, I'm going to move you in the direction <laughs> where it's good for you. And, and where it's good for you is, is the fact that we have the opportunity right now, the more that all of us collect to and gather together the more that we have the opportunity to shift to a reality where people actually take care of the earth where people are leading with love instead of fear as their base emotion where we feel safe to like have our kids into where it's like normal to have first contact with other species because like alien species because 
of course there's more people out in the universe than us. Like how dumb would it be if we were the only species in all of the, the multiverse and where it's very normal to have other dimensions and what we choose to believe as a past life is actually parallel lives happening simultaneously because time is a construct that we've made in our 3D reality and it's actually 4D. And so when we realize that time is an illusion, then we can tap into these counterparts of ours that are happening, they're having parallel lives in other realities. So this is what I'm trying, I'm, it's like I holding all of this in my brain, sometimes it's like, when I go out and I talk to people and they're talking about some drama that they have with whatever they've just made up in their life, I'm like, I cannot. I need to go home and meditate <laughs> because there's so much big stuff coming and I'm so ready for it. And Faraday and I are sitting here talking about it all the time and we're messaging all our friends around the world who are also on the same vibration. And what starts to happen is that you start to shift into a reality like your reality bubble is whoever you choose to hang out with, whatever you ch information you choose to consume and whatever path you're allowing your higher self to guide you down synchronistically. So the whole world can be falling apart, but you can have a really great reality bubble. And I'm not talking about disassociating from what's happening in the world. I'm talking about choosing consciously to create your own version of heaven on earth in your life because what the government's religion society does not want us to realize is that each one of us has the power to change the whole world if we allow ourselves to connect to our higher selves and become our authentic selves so i want to say that again each one of us has the power to change the whole world and we have the power to change the whole world even more so when we come together as our authentic selves. Because it only takes a couple people to set the, the path of a new direction that the earth can go in and then all and then other people following that for the whole thing to change. Look at even if you want to look at it like I don't know how you feel about Elon Musk, but look at how Elon Musk has changed the world uh, when it comes to electronic cars and spacecraft and everything like he's one person and you can choose what you believe of whether his stuff is positive or negative or whatever but he's he's out there he's changing things you know and I really honor that that he's like moving and shaking things in the world and imagine if there was us out there who are like I'm awake to the fact that I want to protect the earth, that the fact that I don't want to kill animals for food anymore, the, to the fact that, you know, I want to have a safe space for my kid, my future kids to come into and play and like actually have some nature left to play with <laughs> and to connect to, then we can really shift the reality of the whole earth. Okay. I got on a tangent there. I want you to know that there is there is a positive reality that we all choose can choose to switch into. And this is the one that I'm actively in right now. And, and also it's very important that you're grounded in that reality because what I have seen on this Island, especially during lockdown, when the Island was uh, on Copenhagen here, when the Island was closed and there wasn't that no one was allowed onto the Island. So we were in our own, you could leave, but you couldn't come back. Um, so we were in our own little bubble here and people were taking psychedelics and they were waking up. They were like really waking up, but they weren't able to hold it in their bodies. And so they kind of went a little crazy. And I was like, I'm never going to be one of those people. And then I'm over here sober, like feeling like really ungrounded. So anyways, here's some tips. I'm going to give you some tips on how to stay grounded through a spiritual, any sort of spiritual awakening, any sort of waking up because there's no point in waking up if it doesn't feel good in your body. There's no point. The, who's like, if you love yourself, and I'm going to tell you that is the first step to waking up, then you only want to wake up as far as it feels good in your body. So these might sound basic, but I'm starting to do them daily and they're really helping me. So cold showers, like take cold showers. Whenever you're like, anytime you're taking a shower, make sure it's cold. It doesn't matter if it's hot cold outside it's really important um yin it's y-i-n yin grounding yoga you can look it up on youtube and there's tons of free yoga flows so yin yoga is good 
um, eating greens and grains, so like grounding food. You can even Google this like on YouTube, like what's grounding food. And like leafy greens, so like anything that's green, like broccoli, I don't know, anything green is really good and grounding. And also like, um, like rice, nuts, like quinoa, like grounding food. These are really important right now for you to have in your body. Um, something that I really love that I, my, my friend Ravi is uh, always promoted throughout the years is when you first wake up in the morning and when you're going to sleep at night to put your legs up against the wall. So like just scoot as close to the wall as possible and put your legs up and just be in kind of this, like you can close your eyes and be in a little meditative. You can put some like meditative music on. Um, this helps all the blood flow like come down into your body like from your legs and it's very grounding I was doing this this morning with Faraday and it was like I was like oh this feels amazing like why haven't I been doing this every day so this is amazing um dancing is always great like just getting the energy to move through your body through dancing I've been going to tons of aesthetic dances recently making my own dances here on the island um, meditating and speaking to your higher self. So when you are having any sort of awakening, just know that this is something that you have chosen on a higher level that you might not be consciously aware of right now. And that's okay because everything's happening for you and everything's going to be okay. So when you realize this, you can allow your ego, which is just your personality construct here that's trying to protect you, to say, hey, I understand you're trying to protect me. I'm okay. And then you can even s like meditate, close your eyes, meditate, speak to your higher self and be like, okay, I'm ready to work with you. Like I, I want to ground in my body. So please, can we work together on this? Like I'm, I'm ready to wake up even more, but I want it to feel really good in my body. And you can set, set that intention. And when you do that, you subconsciously are going to start grounding more and you'll, you'll be synchronistically lined up with more things that are grounding for you because anything you say into the universe just so you know literally anything you speak out into the universe you are manifesting you are creating into your reality this is why i realized with faraday like germany has he's german and germany has this like programming where they say what they don't want out loud a lot like i don't want this thing to happen i don't want that and so i'm constantly like inviting him to say what he actually wants because what you speak into the void <laughs> is what you create in your reality. So for instance, if you're like, I don't want, I don't want to lose all my money. Like th your consciousness, your higher self, everything that's listening does not recognize that you say, I don't, it just says lose. It just sees what you just said out in the universe, which is lose all my money, lose all my money, lose all my money. And that's, what's going to manifest. So I really invite you to set the intention. I want to ground. I choose to ground. I choose to have to wake up in a way that feels really good in my body. You know, whatever you're choosing for your timeline, say, speak it out loud, speak it to your higher self and really just sit with that and know that the second you speak it out, it's going to happen. It's going to slowly start unfolding. And then you can just look for the fun synchronicities of how it will unfold beautifully in your life. And you can also say, I want it to happen in a way that I love and that feels really good in my body. Because you can also violently manifest things. <laughs> Have you ever had this happen where you're like, I wanted that, but not in that way. Um, and so this is why it's very important to say, I want it to happen in a way that feels really good in my body. Um, acupuncture. Uh, we just booked acupuncture sessions for Friday. Like tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, we booked acupuncture sessions for tomorrow. I'm super excited. It helps you align the energies in your body. Um, walking barefoot in nature and connecting to the earth as much as you can. Here on Kopang Young, we walk. We don't wear shoes because <laughs> we're mostly on the beach or in nature. Um, and it pretty much, I would say, 99% of where I walk every single day is like on dirt. Like there's no concrete where I live. Like I drive on the street which is concrete but then when I arrive somewhere it's grass dirt or the beach so for me that's really amazing it's like constant grounding but what I've also been adding to the list is every morning and 
like every morning at sunset, Faraday and I have been going to the beach, um, our favorite beach here, Hadiao Beach, and it's really long and beautiful and big and wide and open. So like energetically, it feels really nice, even if there's people there, um, to just really ground into the earth and to go in the water a lot and just allow nature to be part of, just to be part of nature and to ground into that because that will very much, it's basically, okay, when you are waking up, there is this moment when you realize that you could, what Faraday likes to say, p- call p- peace out. Like you're like, peace out of this existence. And then you go back to spirit. So the point of what I'm trying to share with you is that you, so that you say, do what I started calling, let's peace in. Let's stay in this timeline. So you can wake up as much as you want, as long as you can hold that energy in your body and stay in your body. So like stay as Brittany Bond in this physical reality construct where we're just like on this timeline where I wake up and I'm choosing to live in this reality and I love it and I want to stay here. Um, (laughs) uh, My friend said something that I thought was cute. She was like, go hug some trees. And I was like, I'm already, people already think I'm starting to be a hippie. So I guess this is something I can do. Um, so hugging trees and imagining their root systems coming into your spine and going all the way through, all the way down into the ground and just really like grounding into nature. Uh, I'm going to try that today at sunset. I'm excited. Um, so, so these are some things that I have started to do that have been really helping me to, um, stay grounded because basically what I have been feeling like recently is a lot of pressure in my head and a lot of just like energy in my body to the, and it feels like I'm like on a roller coaster where it's spinning and I'm just like, I kind of just want everything to slow down. (laughs) And, and then there's points where like my, I'm like checking with my inner child and she's just a little bit internally screaming and she's like, I just, I just wanted to stop. Like it's too much. And then I, uh, it's so interesting too, because I was like, hesitant to tell this to Faraday um because I think him and I are both feeling it and so yesterday I was reading to him what my friend wrote to me um about all these like tips about grounding we were driving to the beach and it was it was just a really weird moment between us because I was like yeah these are things that I think I are really helping me and and I think maybe they can help you too and and like I was like because I actually haven't been feeling it was like the first time I really was real with him about how much I really haven't felt grounded and he's like oh I'm fine we're gonna be fine everything's fine and I I felt really shut down I was like why are you saying I'm like I honor your I said I honor your experience but I am not maybe having the same experience as you and maybe you're feeling more grounded than I am (laughs) which is a funny thing to say because normally it's the opposite um And then when we got to the beach, I was like, why did you cut me? Like, why did you basically shut me down then? That doesn't make me feel good. And, and then he was real with me and he was like, I just can't, the idea of losing you or like you going crazy or you pissing out is like, I just cannot hold that reality in my body. That makes it's too much. It hurts too much. And so I'm sorry. I just kind of was trying to just make it everything. Okay. And I was like, I'm staying in this body everything is okay we are great and also we need to face this reality that we are currently facing and with Faraday and I him and I have always been the type of people where we go through it first before our community goes through it like we are the first one in our group of friends in our community in our society through that maybe it's like what our soul chose on this timeline where we are just the ones choosing to go through (laughs) all of this adventures first before the rest of the world and everyone else does and so I was telling him I'm like we need to figure this out not just for ourselves but for our friends and for the world because this is this is what we're all shifting into this is a huge energy shift that like everyone is choosing to go through on their with their souls and some people some people will take a lot longer than others but the ones who are on Copenhagen especially our close friends like they can feel us. We're affecting them. We're waking them up more. And 
I want to figure out how to ground so that our community can also figure out how to ground so that we can all go through this energy shift in a way that feels good for everyone. And he was like, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm sorry. And da, da, da. And, but I, I thought it was really beautiful that he was just like, I just can't imagine losing you. Um, I'm like, I love you. <laughs> and also, I'm not going to lose myself. There's no, no one's losing anyone here. It's just like, we just, but we also have to face it, you know, like face it. This is some really big stuff and we need to, we need to honor it and also like get some tools so that it feels better to go through, you know? So if you are feeling any of these things, I'm sending you lots of love. Please know that you're okay. You're going to be great and you're not alone in any of this. And this is a really beautiful thing because it means that your soul has chosen to upgrade f first before other people's because um, this is something the whole world's about to go through, um, at least the world that we're shifting into that is choosing to shift into a different timeline with all the beautiful things that we're all manifesting for a new earth. Um, but we have to shift our vibration. We only can see the reality that we are a vibrational match to. So everything that we see externally, we have shifted vibrationally inside of our bodies, inside of our spirits to match that vibration so that we can see that externally. And so this is what I was trying to explain earlier. It's like this new earth that we are all calling in, this basically a better world that we all want, a world where we feel safe, a world where we have s our soul family around us and everyone's working to make the earth like better and like take care of nature and and <laughs> you know like all these beautiful things that we all want it is not going to shift from us going out and being activists and i'm not knocking anything about activism it's going to shift from us internally working on ourselves and raising our vibration to match the world that we want to see and then of course we have to do things in the 3d reality to fall and match that you know like take care of the earth recycle be nice people all those things but i'm saying that the majority of the work and the majority of things that will make that reality in the 3d happen is happening internally and that's what i'm talking about is like this is why becoming your authentic self and and working through your trauma and really facing your stuff in a way that you feel safe helps you to be on a vibration that will externally match what you're calling in. It's 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 a really interesting it's a hard thing to explain because it's like we are raised in our programming, our baseline programming is 3D mental construct. So like when I'm trying to put this into words, this is why psychedelics and the spiritual world, a lot of times they don't use physical world words, words, because words are describing our physical reality. And when you're describing a spiritual reality or a spiritual shift, sometimes the words don't line up. So I hope this is getting explained to you in a way that makes sense. If nothing else, honestly, the vibration of my voice, because I'm trying to vibrationally tell this to you, I hope will also sink in. Okay, so now in the, the, the second half of this podcast, I would like to speak to, I, a couple of weeks ago, I asked listeners, what do you guys want to hear from me? And um, people wrote some things that they wanted to like hear me talk about. And so I made a list of them here and I'm excited to talk about them with you, but I'm going to drink some cacao. Mmm. Thank you. Shout out to Faraday for making me amazing cacao every morning. I love him. <sighs> so yeah, let's take a deep breath on that. You're not going crazy. Everything's okay. And yeah, if you're listening to this, it's probably because synchronistically you are waking up and you really want to understand what is happening. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, you're doing great. Everything's okay. Okay, so the first thing someone asked, and just, none of these are in any certain order. I just wrote them down as people, as I saw them. Um, people asked if, um, what I believe about astral projection. So if you've ever 
I'm just going to explain it very briefly what astral projection is. You can Google it. Um, the concept of astral projection is that you are awake. Like literally, I, I'm not dreaming. I'm not in a dream state. Or, okay, let's just say you're consciously awake um, and your body, your spirit leaves your body while you are consciously awake. So you still have like, they kind of call it this like tether, this like spiritual tether, which is like a, a connection. If you don't, tether means like a, a rope. Imagine a rope connecting like a spiritual in the spirit world, a rope connecting your spiritual body to your physical body. So you're still somehow connected, but you're able to astral project out of your body. And then they were just like, is, do you believe in this? Is this possible? Of course I believe in this. Um, this is my talk about for me being awake. I've been awake for as long as, I mean, as much as I've been conscious because all these things have happened to me before I really understood what they were. So I have been astral projecting since I was a kid and I've read, I've since read many books on astral projection. Um, and what I found interesting in my research is that most people if they've had encounters of astral projection they don't realize they've had it because it's happened when they were little as kids when they were being sexually molested so imagine like and this is what happened to me so imagine being a little kid being sexually molested you don't want to be in your body in that moment and so you leave your body you astral project and I just remember like floating outside of my body, looking down on the situation that was happening and being kind of confused because I didn't have to feel anymore what was happening, but I was still there in the room. I wasn't like I, like I hadn't like blacked out or like, you know, fainted or anything. I was still fully conscious, but I wasn't in my body anymore. So, of course, this is not something that you talk about to your friends or your parents, you know, like, especially even as a little kid, I didn't really understand what it was until I started researching, reading books on astral projection. There's this really good book. Um, I'm trying to remember what it's called now. It's, uh, if you just look up astral projection in books, it's like the main book. It's this guy who researched it for, I think, f 30 years. He had a dream journal or a astral projection journal where, because a lot, also a lot of astral projection happens when you're in the, they call it lucid dreaming. And it's in the state where you're, you're in the dream state, but your consciousness is awake. And the reason why this is easier for people to remember and ask to project is because your conscious, your physical mind is not in control of you as much. So you allow your physical mind lets down its guards kind of, and you're allowing yourself to blend the spiritual world, the physical world more. Um, so this one guy was able to astral project and like go into like f other dimensions, kind of like when you take DMT, like he was able to go into other dimensions, other realities, all as his physical mind construct, like in this personality that we have now, um, and then come back into his physical body. So go out of like his spirit goes out of his body and then comes back into his physical body and he remembers all these things and he would write them down. Uh, and I found that book to be really interesting. I think it's called like Out of Body Experiences or something. And because he wrote this book in like the 80s and he was like a, f um, a pretty well-known banker, banker, like a like he worked in a bank in, in the East Coast of, of the States. And um, he didn't publish the book for a really long time because he didn't want people to think he was crazy. <laughs> but he, this is like something he did in his spare time. And so since then, I, I've, I've like started to... Um, a couple of years ago, I had a boyfriend who was also really into it. And so uh, in the book, they talk about how the best time to ask to project is in the afternoon, like to take a nap in the afternoon because your physical mind is still pretty awake. Whereas like when you go to sleep at night, you're like ready to go into like full sleep mode and REM state. But in the afternoon, your physical mind is a little bit more awake, but then you're allowing, because you're like taking a nap and sleeping, you're allowing your body to relax and your physical mind to relax a little bit. And so you're able, and then there's all these exercises you can do where you like are laying down with your eyes closed. And then you like imagine yourself like rolling over out of the bed or sitting up. And these are ways to kind of practice uh, like having your spirit leave your body in a conscious way. And I was able to do it with my boyfriend. And what I realized was I couldn't do it by myself for a while. Um, like whenever I was alone in bed by myself, 
I couldn't astral project. And I, I realized it was c- because it was connected to me being sexually molested. I didn't feel safe to astral project unless someone was watching my body and protecting my body, which is like a, whoa, like what the fuck? That's a huge thing for me to realize. Um, and I didn't, li- I didn't like that because I didn't want m- my spiritual invest I call it like spiritual investigations or like I didn't want me actually projecting to be reliant on someone else like I was like I want to be able to do this on my own not with like someone else there and then I was like okay do I really want to ask I had this thing where I was like really wanting to go into the spiritual world and I was trying all these things and I was super curious to connect this is before I was like fully fully awake because now I'm like oh I'm already there and now I want to stay in my body um and so yeah, if you're interested in astral projection, all these things, the thing I will say that kind of helped me to not be as obsessively interested in it was um, we manifest whatever reality we really want. And so I was watching this documentary by Ram Das. Um, he's amazing. If, I'm sure you know who Ram Das is. If you don't know who Ram Das is, go get the book called Be Here Now. Be Here Now. It's like one of the best books ever. Uh, he's one of the first people who made a uh, psychedelic um, LSD in Harvard lab in like the sixties. And um, he's very awake and he really wanted to experience the spiritual world for forever. So he's always taking psychedelics and he went to India. He was with the gurus there and everything. And then he said, I wanted to be in the spiritual world more than I was in the physical world. And then he got paralyzed and he from for I think the second half of his life he was in a wheelchair and couldn't really move most of his body but it gave him the time every single day to be in the spiritual world he was in his imagination he was yeah he was like contemplating a lot of spiritual things and he's like his advice after that was like one be careful what you're manifesting and two we're here to have a 3d reality experience not to be in the spiritual world like we're going to the spiritual world straight away right after this you know so we might as well be enjoying this as much as we can and this is when i came to the conclusion of like oh i don't want to just pop off into spirit all the time i want to like pull the spiritual world and pull the energy into my physical body and see how powerful i can get in this physical reality and how much i can use that power to shape the reality that i want to create this new earth that i really want so that's my thing on astral projection i find it very interesting i love it i love talking about all this stuff um, someone asked, how do you deal with handling people? So friends and family that are not understanding your, um, basically spiritual awakening, your ascension, whatever you want to call it, shifting your vibration. This is a whole thing. Like, um, this is such an interesting question for me to answer because coming from a reality that I do where, you know, I grew up in a very deep community. I say deep community as in like, I was very connected to everyone um, within my religion. It was like everyone, they literally called each other brothers and sisters. So, you know, if someone's name, last name was like Taylor or something, we'd always be like, hi, brother Taylor, how are you? Like, literally, that's the programming we had. And anywhere we went in the world, if you met a Jehovah's Witness, they would immediately invite you in and um, have you over for dinner. And if you needed a place to sleep, you could, it was just like this given, it's kind of like, it felt like kind of like a secret society in a way. It was like everyone was kind of in on it together and everyone was there for each other and helping each other. Really beautiful. Also super unhealthy because it was also a cult. And so when I chose to leave the religion, I got kicked out and I, all of that community got taken away, including my family. So I know very clearly what it feels like to not have anyone and, and just to, to basically choose the reality that I wanted to for myself and to have that decision have the consequence of losing everyone I care about. I was a very extreme example of this. Most people don't have to go through that timeline where they lose everyone. <laughs> um, because I went through that, Uh, and like, you know, the hardest part was losing my connection with my mom and my sisters. Um, because I went through that, everything else in my life, it doesn't feel like that big of a deal. Like that was the hardest thing that I had to deal with. Um, so since then, 
because I was raised in a community where it was very connected and people really took care of each other, like on the weekends, you know, all the parents would be babysitting all the kids together. And I remember spending most of my summers like going and helping the older people around their house and like visiting them and, and just like taking care of our sick ones in our, in our church. And like everyone was so connected. I have this programming in me and also I'm going to talk about human design in a second, but like also in my human design, I have the tribal line, which is very connected to community. And so every time I've, every place I've gone in the world, I've traveled to over 50 countries. I have always built communities. And when I was building them, you know, first off, after leaving my religion, I was just so happy to have friends <laughs> and to have people who, you know, were also working remotely. People who had left, quote unquote, the matrix. They were not living the nine to five job and buying into the materialism and just getting stuck in this unhappy loop of having to buy more things and work more and have a mortgage. I was hanging out with people who had started their own business and were traveling the world and coming up with really amazing things and going on adventures together around the whole world. So those were the people that I was hanging out with and I loved all of them. And I was so excited to have like-minded people around. And so I was building these communities um, through co-working spaces and through just different community outreach uh, stuff that I was doing everywhere I was traveling. And, but then, so this is where I'm gonna get to the point of answering this question. It would hit this point where I outgrew people around me. Like they were still talking about the normal drama. And this is when I realized that it wasn't just about hanging out with people who were talking about the same things I was interested in. It was also really important to hang out with people where it felt good in my body around them. And I was like, what does that mean? Why would it feel good in my body? And I was realizing I want to hang out with people who are positive and have a growth mindset. And as what that means is like they want to evolve their consciousness. They are constantly on this path. And it's not necessarily about healing trauma. It's just about understanding why we're here on these timelines and like understanding this one big game, one big puzzle. And we can constantly be finding different pieces of the puzzle and like coming together and learning more about each other and learning more about how to have this human experience in a way that feels really good in our bodies and laughing about it and crying about it. But at the end, coming back to the conclusion that everything's amazing and we're so grateful to be here. So, that is the kind of tribe that I have now and that I have like built, but it has taken many variations to get there. And every single time I hit this kind of moment in my group of friends where I'm like, oof, it doesn't necessarily feel so good to hang out with these people anymore because they're not growing. And this is when I realized that I can't be, I can't help them grow. I need to risk. This is when I came up with the term respect the timeline because I need to respect whatever growth timeline they are on. And also I need to honor where I'm at in my time. And if I'm growing faster than they are, that's okay. And it's okay if suddenly I don't want to hang out with them anymore. And I think this is what's happening with a lot of people in the the world right now is that they are waking up to this bigger understanding of why we're here and waking up to a, a bigger spiritual reality and with that becomes comes a lot more sensitivity to safe spaces, comes a lot more being able to see through like people's dramas and their loops and everything. And then it also comes with not being able to handle being around those people as much. Like I can't sit. I, 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 <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have shown up at a party here or a lunch or some sort of organized event. And I usually am the one organizing these events for for many, many years. And now I can barely even show up to one and I get there. I say hi to people. They're all making small talk. They're all talking about drama stuff or talk complaining about something. And I'm like, I got to (laughs) go. Like, I just want to go home and hang out with Faraday and Afro my dog and go into nature or hang out with my close friends and talk about really deep things, really beautiful spiritual things that we're discovering right now and just study those things or just like be with myself and like journal and meditate and dance and draw and like Faraday just got us like some paints and pastels and we're gonna start making more art 
like these are the things that really are beautiful for my soul, you know? And I, I have a whole podcast on like how to build your soul tribe and how to create your epic timeline. These are two podcasts I really recommend everyone listen to because they speak into this very specifically. But what I will say is give yourself full permission to make new friends or hang out by yourself. You know, um, for me, I have ha- I, I have probably known thousands and thousands of people and through come through my life and my timeline through my work, through community building, through my religion, through traveling, thousands and thousands of people. And some of these people I am very good friends with for a certain amount of time and then I'm not. And I just let it go. You just allow all of it. And if people are trying to make you feel bad for not hanging out with them as much, that is on them. No one should ever make you, they are not allowed to make you feel bad for not hanging out with them. If they try to make you feel bad for not hanging out with them, you should probably not be hanging out with those people. If, if there's someone that you really love and they just don't understand like that you're having this kind of like spiritual awakening or like this vibrational shift and you're, so I had to sit down with some of my very close friends here on the island I love so much and I had to just tell them like, look, this is how it's been feeling in my body. And it doesn't feel very good when I'm around someone and they're like looping or they're complaining about things. I'm like this sensitive little baby right now that's like on this new vibration. Every time you hit a new vibration, you're kind of like this little sensitive baby that just needs to be like in a safe space, in quiet, in nature. And if you're around like super loud noises, chaos and all of that, like you're super open and vulnerable in that moment and you really need to protect that. And so I was explaining this to some of my close friends and they were like, oh, I get it now. I get it. I'm sorry. And sorry, like I didn't understand. I'm like, it's okay. There's nothing to be sorry for. I'm just like, just honor that I need to do my thing right now. You know, I'm usually such a social person. And now I am so protective of who I have in my life and who I have in my vortex. And that's what I'm also honoring that. And so I invite you guys to do this too. And and if it's someone that you really love and they just really don't understand what's going on and they're worried about losing the connection, you can you can sit down with them or send a message. I also find voice messages to be really nice because you can get your vibration out there, but you don't necessarily need to have a back and forth conversation. And then they can listen to it a couple times and then respond when they when they feel good in their bodies too. Um so human design Let's talk about human design for a second. Um, once you understand that we are everything, everywhere, all at once, and we're choosing to split off into these separate souls for a time to grow consciousness and evolve, you realize that everything, everything is a permission slip. And so when I realized this, I still, we still are choosing to have, okay, if we're looking at, as us as spirits coming into this 3d bodies we are choosing we still it's a game that we're choosing to play and we we have different rules of the game of how we're choosing to have our soul show up so your soul is like this infinite timeless thing that's going on forever and you know what is time but it's like can never be destroyed and will keep having its journey and then on this specific timeline you're choosing to have your soul grow in a certain way. And before you came here, your soul decided to come in in a certain way in order to grow specifically. I'm, I'm trying really hard to like put this in the simple terms. So human, what I believe human design is, is a soul blueprint. So it's like your personality construct chose to come in, in this very specific way to act out this game. And when you learn that and you learn how to mo- play with it, then you can actually rise above it and you can tra- what they call transcending, which is means like you don't need that permission slip anymore. So for me, like I'm a five one generator on the human design. Some brief things about my human design uh, that I love to seduce and be seduced. Um, so this is just like something about my personality. Like I really enjoy this is also why I really enjoy making love and flirting and 
why I'm attracted to like hosting play parties and also just the way that I go about everything I do. I'm like, mm, I want it to feel really yummy in my body. I want it to feel like my clothes are making love to me. I want to just everything to kind of feel like this one big seduction. And so when I realized that, when I read that, I was like, yeah, that's totally me. Another thing about my personality type is that the archetype of it is the savior. So people look at me like I can save them. <laughs> and they're always like coming to me with their problems and somehow I can help them. And for whatever reason, m yeah, my soul actually can help a lot of people. And I have been able to quote unquote save a lot of people. But what I realized knowing now my human design is I get to choose who I want to use that power for. I don't have to just save everyone who comes through and wants my help. I get to choose. So human design originally started from some guy who took ketamine. <laughs> so, uh, in Ibiza, he got, he took, he was on a psychedelic and then he got downloaded this stuff, channeled it from some other realm and, um, made this in the eighties. And it's just barely getting to be pretty mainstream now. Like now on Instagram, I see like, uh, movie stars and musicians being like my human design is this thing so it's becoming pretty mainstream there's a lot of really shitty information online about human design like if you try and youtube it or anything i really don't recommend doing that i recommend like finding someone who um is is like a human design reader who's really good at, at reading human design um i thankfully on this island there's like a lot of really amazing people who are good at human design um, so I have gotten some readings done by different people. And then I was just, I actually, f um, uh, was given the, the audio recordings of the guy who downloaded human design, the one who originally brought it into the world, like him speaking about it. And I just listened to those a lot and I like really absorbed what it is. So if you're interested in it, I always, um, say, and Faraday always says, it's like, if it's something, this is from Bashar, if, if something is exciting to you to research, that is a permission slip for you. So it's not whether everyone should be on human design or not. It's like, I personally found it to be a really amazing permission slip for me to understand myself and my community. And whereas like Faraday, when he first heard about it, he was like, no, this is dumb. But then now since I've explained it to him and like really sh showed him like some of our friends and their human designs, he's like, whoa, this is actually pretty cool, you know? So if it's something that's interesting for you and exciting for you, you can speak into the universe that you want to learn more about it. You can Google it. You can look, ask around for someone to give you a human design reading and it will find you. Okay. Astrology. I find astrology to be my understanding of what I feel like astrology is, is our, our souls coming into this timeline. And then astrology is what we choose, the energy of which we choose to express ourselves through our personality construct. It's like our soul is choosing to express ourselves through this. Um, there's something you can Google called um, calculate your rising sign on like, you can just Google this and it's a free thing. So you can do that and you can calculate your rising sign. And the three things I'll tell you about human uh, the, about astrology that I always look at. I first started learning about astrology, like right before I came to Copenhagen and then here you just like cannot escape it because everyone's talking about astrology. And what I want to say is that I don't believe that astrology is a, like, this is who you are. I feel like it's the energy of which you choose to express yourself. So you can still be, everyone can still be whatever they want, but I, and I don't ever, if no, I am never preaching about human design or astrology to anyone. This is just something fun. Like this is a game that I play within myself when I learn people's astrology or their human design. And I'm like, I'm like using it as one life science experiment where I'm like, gathering information on people, analyzing it, seeing if I find it to be validating it within myself, honestly. <laughs> this is all my legal stuff coming into play. Um, so I'll just explain three things about astrology that I find, I, the main three things that I look at. There's so much that you can look at. Um, and there's so many different types of astrology. There's like Western astrology and then something called Vedic astrology, which comes from India. Um, and so these are different, there's tons of things. Three things that I'll say, um, briefly that I found to be interesting about astrology is your sun sign S U N like the sun and then the moon sign. And then what, what we call the rising sign slash it. Another word for that is the ascendant sign. So I'll describe mine. So mine, I am a Scorpio sun, 
So in my interpretation, what I've researched about astrology is the sun sign is what your soul chose to come in as a personality construct energy, like to express itself when you first are born. So for me, mine is Scorpio. And that's like very powerful, very intense, very emotional, and also very sexual. And then your moon sign is what you, uh, your, it's how you express, the energy of which you express your emotional reality. So for me, I happen to have my moon sign also in Scorpio, which is unusual to have like sun and moon the same. Um, but mine is a Scorpio and the Scorpio moon is again, very intense emotions, very loyal, very deep love, you know, like <laughs> very sexual. Um, and then your rising sign or your ascendant sign is what your soul chose. You start it expressing yourself when you're born into one, your sun sign is one energy. And then if you're going to grow, which consciousness wants to grow, uh, then you rise into expressing yourself in another which is your as your ascendant sign or your your rising sign and the rising sign happens after you come out of what's called a saturn return and all that means is from when you were born saturn made one full rotation around the sun like from when you were born so it happens between the ages of 28 and 30 and all of this you can calculate when you google calculate your rising sign because when you fill out that form, it will also tell you your, your rising, your sun, and your moon. Um, so for me, my rising sign is Aquarius. So that means that um, I think for me, m I, c I came into my rising sign, expressing my rising sign when I was like 30. Um, so very recently. And I remember, I remember the shift. I remember <laughs> because the Aquarius, I, okay, so mine are very opposite signs in a lot of ways, like my sun and my rising. So the sun is what, what, what my soul chose to come in expressing itself when I first was born and then my rising. So from Scorpio to Aquarius, it's, it's like starting from deep, powerful, um, uh, very emotional to Aquarius, which is light, airy, uh, Scorpio is a mo uh, water sign, so and like very flowy, and then um, Aquarius is an air sign, which is like very light, airy. Uh, sometimes has a hard time expressing emotions, likes to analyze things, and also just wants to play. And the Aquarius sign is what the whole world. Um, so the Aquarius sign is also all about calling in the new and like going out and seeing what's new in the world and bringing it back to society and trying to help bridge the gap for society to get into a new world. What you hear about people saying that we are in, quote unquote, the age of Aquarius is that we all have our, again, our macro, micro expressions of our astrology is like, this is your own personality. What I just told you, my, my personal astrology, which is happening with my soul. And then there is the macro astrology, which is the whole universe is going through an astrology situation. And right now the whole universe is going into what is called the age of Aquarius. And so this is also Aquarius is known for new, t it's everything new, like new tech, new way of living, new way of creating a new earth, everything new, new, new. And so the whole world is shifting into this age of Aquarius right now, which is a really beautiful time. And it's also why a lot of us are having these huge vibrational upgrades. So <laughs> I feel like this is a lot of information. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Th the thing I will end on is one last question someone said is, how do I uh, honor my emotions while in the presence of others? So for instance, say you are, you show up at a party or you show up in a situation and you're super sensitive now because you're way more awake than you used to be. And so you can see through everything and you're like, whoa, I do not want to be here right now. How do you navigate that situation? What really helps me is to be very open and honest and vocal about I need to honor my body. And right now my body needs to go. So you don't need to say, I don't like it here or you guys are whatever. What, you don't need to judge. There's no judgment on any of things. This is just you honoring your own personal reality and whatever experience you're having. And I have done this multiple times to the point where my friends are just used to me saying it, where I'm like, 
Whew, I'm feeling a lot of things in my body right now. My body just needs to go. And I love all of you guys or, you know, honor this situation. I hope you guys have fun. But I personally need to go. And I will tell you that <laughs> people really respect it when you honor your body. And it's giving them the example that when they're in a situation where they don't feel good in their bodies, they can also speak up and have it be heard and held and supported for them to honor their bodies. So we are all game changers. We are all out here changing the world one one step at a time. Um, so I invite you to always put yourself in situations that are nourishing for you and where you feel so good in your body, so yummy. And please do this because you are worthy and you are loved and the universe needs this for each of us to step into our power and honor our bodies and to ground, ground in this new age, this age of Aquarius, of all these beautiful things coming. Um, because it's all happening. There's no rush. We have already arrived. And now we just need to make sure it feels really good in our bodies. Okay. Love you. Bye.